I love sending Kim pics because she gets irritated. Whatever irritates Kim, I like so to funny, do. Mama. <laughs> so funny, mamas. So funny, What's happening? What's happening, people? Welcome to Two Funny Mamas. I'm Kim Whitley. Sherry is doing Sherry as usual. Uh, we got Chris. Uh, he on this. Can't tell Why the you fuck out laughing? Sherry. Yep. <clears throat> Sorry. Go ahead. Sherry is way right now. Uh, uh, doing some things for Sherry. I mean, for the show. And but we have a guest host today, one of our friends, who you have seen on television. You've seen him on the big screen. He's very funny. Welcome back to the show, Guy Tory. Guy Tory in the place to be. He got kicked out to Mammoth University. What up, Kim? What up, Chris? What up, peoples? How we doing, Guy? I'm doing I'm great, man. I can't complain, man. I like this co-host setup as the host uh, looks like my long lost ghost of an Irish relative up top. <laughs> That's Kim. It's a mug shot. It's a mug shot over here. It's Kim yeah, you, McGregor. You got, hand. You, got this, you, got this, you got that DMV uh, uh, background going on. Like you taking a driver's license picture with Shaka Khan's hair. Right. Guy, look at Guy. Oh, yeah. He's. He's rocking the Emo's Pizza from St. Louis. He's got the St. Louis mug. He's got the Fat Tuesdays up in the background. Look at that. And, and that's not a Melaton, Kim. That's a Peloton. Check that out. <laughs> Check that out in the background. That place is pristine. That's probably a, that's probably a fake screen, Chris. <laughs> you think he's got a screen <laughs> that, that no, makes I him look so. like an adult? <laughs> you, you know what, Kim? I wish I had those uh, skills. And I wish I was high tech like that. I always wanted to do those fake screens, but I don't know how to do it. Wow. I don't either. But wait a minute, guy. Um, you do dress up. You do better than us. You got a real setup. Chris has never given us a real setup. <laughs> We're on hold. You right know, now. I started as a Kim. You know, I started as a production assistant in this business, so I did it all. You know, deliver scripts, help set up. You know, a little bit of hair, and makeup, a little bit of set dressing. I did it all. I started from the bottom. Now I'm here. What's What's in your cup? I got tea, tea right now. I'm saving for the, oh. the adult stuff for later. Kim, can we get a refocus on that camera? Well, I saw you just pop off the screen. You ain't give a. You ain't give no nobody no more than enough. I just wanted to get your screen right, and I thought it would be better with a bigger photo. So there you go. I can come back on. I know how much you guys enjoy me. Well, you got guy crooked right now. That's why. Am I crooked? You know? No, you're good. Well, when he so does the double. Kim, what's happening? I'm happy you're here. Sherry is busy. She's out today. Guy was kind enough to come on. You've had a busy day, I'm sure. What have you been up to today? What's going on? And my friends, my two, this are my two ladies right there. You know, I'll, I'll hop in for them. I don't hop in for everybody, but uh, they're my two peoples right there. We we came up in this game together at the same time. Tell and, them, uh, tell them we came up. Tell them the show. Tell them the shows we was on. Man, we. Hey, let me tell you something. We started at the Comedy Act Theater in the Merck Park, first of all, and uh, with the world we famous. Uh, uh, huh? No. Remember Sparks and Good News? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. But I'm starting before Sparks. Sparks oh, oh, my bad, my bad, my bad. Club. Yeah, we got to start where we met. We met in the comedy clubs. And uh, and then we started doing, you know, she was always acting before I was acting. But we, we ended up working on a sitcom, separate sitcoms by the same producer. But our studios are right next to each other. She was on yep. Sparks, Sparks, and Sparks. I was on Good News. I was actually a guest star on Sparks, Sparks, and Sparks which led to my hiring of good news because the same creator, executive producer, did both shows. So he and we've you. been friends ever since. Ed Weinberg, yes, one of the greatest yep. TV producers of all time. Of all times. We talk about Cosby Show. We talk about Taxi, Mary Tyler Moore, We're talking uh Amen. Uh, uh, Amen. Yeah. Good news, no. Sparks, Sparks, and Sparks. That's early. And I heard it wrote broadcast know. radio, broadcast news. Chris is laughing at me because I'm chewing, Chris. You're chewing, and then who? Why are you yelling at Erlene? Erlene, what's what's she up to? By the way, Erlene, a lovely woman. I, I'm a big fan of Erlene. Erlene yells. Come from on, Erlene. You call me. See, that's what old people do. 
<laughs> yeah. You forgot to take, yeah. Earlene. <laughs> All you right. See the last Earlene on Earth. There's nobody else in this world named Earlene. She got there's some early leaders. Earl old ass names. You must get named. Your daddy must be Earl. Um, how you get right? We, yeah, how you get named Earlene? I bet in the South, I'm a there's you, more Earlenes. How how I'm how? Tell you, I used to work for Wick. I used to work for Wick in St. Louis. Women, infants, and children giving out them Wick vouchers, that formula, that milk, and the cheese and beans. So we had clients come in. And, the, and, and we can look at the name and tell that they want the daddy name in it because it'd be Keith Letha and Earlene. And, and, and I mean, those names are ghetto as hell in them Wick offices, man. Don't like, say that. That might be some of our fans right now. They'd be like, that's my name. My name ain't ghetto. Hey, ghetto. I said it. You can get mad at me all day long. You can keep Kim honest. I ain't going to be honest. That's a ghetto ass, country ass name. It was country, maybe a little country. You know, and ghetto because I, I, I worked at the Wick office. You know, I used to get one, Wick. Had one I got Wick. You had Wick. I had Wick when I had Joshua. You know, I got you, Wick. You qualified because of how how you got Joshua. That's how you qualified. I did. Look at you. Look at you up on it. Come on, I know I, I used to work for three years. Dang, I still did. I was going and get my cheese and my milk, my baby formula, the beans and cereal. Beans and cereal, and then they closed my wig off. Hey. Yeah, I was a technician, man. I used to, do, and women come in there. Look, this this was a crazy kill. So I used to be in the clubs on the weekends, just partying. I wasn't doing stand up, uh -huh. and I'd see a one of the clients, wig clients in the club, trying to make oh, her boy. reschedule her wig appointment. I miss my I miss my appointment. Can you come in Monday. My baby ain't got no Merc in St. Louis. It was my baby ain't got no Merc. Wait, Who the hell is Merc? Wait a minute, they was yeah. talking to you at the club? At the club. They were talking, trying to reschedule. I'm at the bar. Trying to reschedule the WIC appointment. Like, I got the appointment book in front of me. That's funny, though. You know yeah. what? Let me I'm see. Telling what, you was your, what was your real struggles in life? Like, the I used to have. What was... Did you ever have a food stamp card? You... No, 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 no. My, my struggles in life was was was, was Joe. No. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> my struggles in life was. Uh, no, tell him, you know, ladies and gentlemen, like his brother. Yeah, my struggle life when I got to LA, when I first got to LA, because Joe was Joe was trying to help out, but I didn't want to take any money from Joe. So my early struggles were doing. You know how we when we started doing comedy shows at pizza parlors, you know, Gino's Pizza in Inglewood. Or doing shows with drug dealer promoters and, and they give you the money with the blood on it because they went to the corner boy and got what? the money to pay you. Yeah. Yeah, you probably had to deal with that because you was you a woman, but yeah, we had to deal with them drug dealer promoters and sometimes they promote the, the after party more than the comedy show. Yes. After party packed, comedy show empty. Empty, but the party. Where, so tell the me. The party was cracking. You Crack it because they knew what to promote. That's where the liquor was. That's where the real money was. Yeah. Hey, speaking of well, promotion, can I? Oh, go ahead, uh -huh. Kim. Go ahead. No, go ahead. That go right into it. That's yep. Let's tell everybody uh, before we get too deep into it. First off, thanks to everybody in the live chat. We've got a bunch of people yep. <laughs> that, that are uh, letting you know that Erlene's is country, but not ghetto guy. That's what the the prevailing thought is. Cheryl got okay. wick, and she's not ghetto. <laughs> This is uh, a personal shot. The name Arlene is not ghetto. Guy. Guy is ghetto. That's from DG. Guy is French. It's G. Guy is French. It's G. Uh, Jay Seabury's <laughs> laughing about the blood on the money. But hey, before we get too deep into this, we've got a bunch of great fans tuned in. You know you love Guy from Fat Tuesdays, everything else. But you know what? If you're in Philadelphia this weekend, March 16th, check yep. this out. Two shows, 7 and 10 o'clock. You can go see live performances by Cleon the Comedian and Guy Tori. 7 p.m. show, guest performance. Big Sill, 10 p.m. show, guest performer. Pound Cake, hosted by Craig McLaren. Good oh, food, wow. drinks, laughs, all in one place. 40 bucks, Wait, regular no, mission. Go ahead. Where's the place? Where's the venue? Well, it's at 1649 it's, 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 West Hunting Park Avenue in Philadelphia, PA. Philly. 
what is there a, na a name on the venue or just we gotta look for the yeah, address? It's, 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 it's Smalls, Smalls Restaurant. Smalls Restaurant. Vincent. Um, That's right. Smalls you can go restaurant on. Yep, Smalls Restaurant. You can go to Eventbrite, get tickets there. Get this. This looks like a really fun show, guy. How'd you? Uh, how'd you? It's gonna be a fun show, man. That show is that show on Saturday. I can't wait. I love playing Philly. Philly's one of those cities, man, where you know they, you, 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 it's a hard working blue collar city, man, and you make sure they come out to lab because they worked hard all damn day. Right. And, and when they show up, they show out, man. So Philly's one of my one of my favorite cities. I don't perform there enough, and they're honest too. And then Tuesday, I'm doing a pop up. In Detroit at Mike Epps Club. Mike Epps has a club in Detroit called One Mike, and I got mm -hmm. I'm on that show on Tuesday um, with a bunch of comedians. So that's gonna be hot. Philly and Detroit. Those are two cities that are my favorites, man. Because my first in my bad, my bad. <laughs> who ordered? And that's my who, theme music that I'm going up on. That's right. That's a sound bed that guy had us prepare ahead of time for. Yeah, I had a, <laughs> yeah, I had a bed, a sound bed. Thank you for the sound bed. Yeah. Hey. But no, Philly's gonna be off the hook, and, get, uh, and go to my Instagram and, and you can get all the information at Guy Tour G U Y T O R R Y. Make that happen. Also, if you're uh, watching right now or if you're listening, the link to the Philadelphia show is in the description, so you can click right there for the Eventbrite. Get that, go see Guy in Philadelphia, and then go check him out in Detroit on Tuesday. I know we've got listeners everywhere. I like that picture, Guy. That's yeah. pretty sexy. Thank so you, you, know, you know, I was, I was good. Well, let me tell you, when you first moved out to LA, did you move in with your brother since he was already out here? Did you all, did you live with him? Absolutely. Absolutely. Okay. For four years, I lived with Joe. I had, I moved out here with $900 in my pocket and a hoop, right? And uh, uh -huh. Joe was already, Joe was in one bedroom at first. And then for about two weeks, um, I stayed with Joe in the one bedroom. Then Joe later went and got a, um, a two bedroom townhouse and we lived together. Um, he paid all the bills. I just, I was, I was the butler. Joe treated me like the butler. Since I wasn't paying any bills, I had to cook, clean. You know, he smacked me in the ass as I walked by, cleaning. Mm. You know, like I was, <laughs> like I was a real woman, female maid or housekeeper or whatever. No, but, but Joe was, uh, that helped my career a lot. I tell it all the time. It's like, cause you know, Kim, when you, anybody move to LA and you don't have money, Man, there be people out here doing something strange for some change. And and I wasn't making enough to have my own place back then. I barely had a car to sleep in. Uh, but so Joe stayed with me, helped my career out a lot because I didn't have that stress of trying to, you know, work another job and try to get on stage. So although I right. did other jobs, you know, but I, I stayed with jobs within the industry. Okay. That's, that's, a, that's a, how, how many good comics were lost to... Uh, okay paying jobs and selling yeah. ass i'm sorry a lot of them were selling ass too one more time shut up chris <laughs> i gotta I, there was a lot of comments that you're doing, just selling selling you know sex to, and i get it it's i understand i mean they, they shouldn't have had to but unfortunately a lot about, of female are you talking about male comics selling ass both both Really? Well, there's a lot of male prostitutes out here, you know, messing with 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 women and men, whoever they can do to get either stage time or or, or get you know do some strange with some change. Kim, I just want to make sure you saw your phone as well, the text. Hey, Chris, stop trying to micromanage me. <laughs> She'll also say, "Why didn't you tell me?" What did you tell? I'm not micromanaging. I'm here for you. I'm your support, Kim. <laughs> but yeah, LA, LA is rough in that regard, you know? So it was. That's what you... Like now there are a, lot, a, plethora, a plethora of female comics. Yes. Do you Thank know God. Comics? Yeah, but comic female comics got lost to this industry because they're taking care of their kids. They couldn't, you know, get yep. on stage. It was a struggle. I think it's some very funny women that just went away. Remember that one girl was a barber. She was funny and cute. Oh mm -hmm. yeah, Angelique. I was trying I was yeah. trying to date her. Oh, she Cleveland. was so real pretty. Yeah. So and pretty. And, and she had she had a nice nice body too, you know. 
she had a nice body, yeah. but I'm not mad at that, right? I was. So what happened? So, Why but, didn't you date him? But you was, was funny. Uh huh. She was a cutie, but no, but she we we, we kind of went out a couple of times, and, and then she started doing stand up, and I was like, I'm out. Are you serious? I don't. I don't. I don't sleep with comics. That's a lie. You slept with me three times. <laughs> Treated him better than earthquake. <laughs> okay, yeah, when we sat together, I, I, I must have had a real centimeter Peter because you didn't feel nothing. <laughs> <laughs> oh God! I got right. a centimeter okay. Peter. You, you probably, you probably, that was just hugging you. Uh, no, you're right. I understand that. So when she started doing stand up, you didn't yeah, care. She was you funny like, too. It, she was very funny. Well, yeah, and, and yeah, and it was just kind of, it was just kind of like you know, uh, I think she started seeing somebody else too. But um, yeah, I was, I was, yeah. The other thing about people, women comics out there, man, which was sad, is that uh, women got hit on a lot by the male comics or male promoters or male, you know, club owners, and they just got tired of that and just quit. They got tired of being, you know, having to try to, you know, have sex for stage time or or just sex period or these fake writing sessions that a lot of male comics used to try to set up and you know next thing you know they the male comic naked and we must be right they both been writing jokes. So a lot of we lost a lot of women just funny women who just who just got tired. Then you had the women who were in relationships, either married or very insecure boyfriends who didn't like that the women were hanging out and a male dominated field. So they quit what from pressure see? from and none of that happened to me, Chris. What's that? I, have, I said, you see, none of that happened to me. I, I was going to say, you, you, you have done a good job. You joke around about it, and maybe you did, and you, you maybe you dated very well, but you've got no, enough stories. I, but you, you're when you get down to it, you're serious that you weren't, you weren't putting yourself in bad positions. And I think, and I'll steal your quote. Maybe you were about to say this. In other positions. That's what I'm saying, brother. <laughs> she didn't say anything about no. Um, I, one of the best things I've ever heard you say, and it's the most true is how you're like, yeah, it would have been fun to maybe sleep with a few people. Like, that's just human. But then the reality is what sets in afterwards. They're not going to look at yeah. you like someone that they should call because they're probably cheating or they're up to something that they they don't want to look like the guy that slept with their co-star to anyone else, right? In that So you're not going to get that call when they have the next thing because they think you you're going to cause them the trouble. You got to think about what's next. That's what you have to think about. Yeah, oh, you absolutely and also, do. You know, guys, I dropped all that trash guys, on the floor. Uh-huh. Also, guys, guys' locker room talk, too. So you don't want to be the subject of locker room talk. Like, you know, guys going to brag that they, they hit, you know, so-and-so yeah. or so-and-so. You know? Unless he's a wiggle mugger. If she's a wiggle mugger, ain't nobody going to say nothing. Ain't nobody that. saying nothing. <laughs> yeah, Kim wasn't a wiggle mugger, so. But let me tell you something. There's a lot of female comics who are wooga muggers that I'm sure got hit that I won't say any names. <laughs> but nobody no, say all the like, talk the name, and they talk about how all the comics they done slept with. I was like, and and and, and she want me to say, wow, you slept with him? I'd be like, he slept with you? Oh, I say it straight to her face. I was like, wow. Right, 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 right. Isn't that a sobering moment when you think you're better looking or or more uh, you're above someone? You're like, oh wait, we've had we've been with the same <laughs> person. He saw us as the same. Right, right, right. But, no, but, but also think, too, it's like you know, uh -huh. go ahead, Kim. Go ahead. No, go ahead. Also too, what? Also too, it's just like, I mean, you know, you're in a comedy club. You're drinking. You're drinking uh -huh. for free. You know, your, your your vision gets a little bit like you know whatever. And you're horny, and then you end up sleeping with somebody that you know you didn't think you'd sleep with, but and you didn't I, think they would I, say anything. I, I only slept with the comics that I knew wasn't gonna make it. So, <laughs> <laughs> I was like, no joke, <laughs> I'm not good. So, we don't worry about you, Kevin Hart. I only so you slept with that. You slept with Buddy Lewis and Danny Green? No, I'm just joking. <laughs> oh, damn. Damn. I'm joking. If it's, a sick, if it's a sitcom and you see Kim, it's kind of like the, it's like Mitzi, but it's a sexual Mitzi at the store. If you see Kim in the crowd and she approaches you afterward, you know you had a terrible set. Like, you, 
that's, oh, yeah. a, that's our grading system. <laughs> You might as well get these panties because you ain't going to make it. You That's know, right. You know, hey, I try, I better start selling cars. Arnold. Me and David got that story. David wanted to take me out on a date. I was running the hot, hot yeah. end. Mm -hmm. I was like, all right. And he got scared because he's a comic. I'm running the, the ha ha. He was like, it's going to mess up everything. And then he stood me up. But I held it against him for years. I was like, you better go over to the Fat Tuesday because you can't come over here whacked out Wednesdays. <laughs> you, you turned it. You turned him into whack off Wednesday. Yeah, he, she whack held it. Wednesday. She held it against him for not holding it against her. That's crazy, right? That's crazy. Rest in peace, David Arnold. We came. We came. My best friend. Um, yeah. You yeah. think about that kind of stuff, and um, I'm glad it didn't happen. Buddy went to school with my brother, so that was never gonna happen. And he was, oh, yeah. and he was told yeah. that in college. So, um, but right. I think about you know being in those situations. But I'm a pretty strong girl, and I grew up with you know boys. So you know comics they would come out, they pull out their willy whack, they come out, and I bust out laughing. I was like, you better go ahead and put that on up. Let us write these jokes or whatever we're gonna do. <laughs> and you know, I love food more than anything. Order me some food. But I wasn't playing with them. I would beat they behind. Yeah. I wish they would. You, so you, 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 they pulled it out, you was like they, they pulled it out, you was like, is that your pen? <laughs> is that you right with? <laughs> right. And I knew, you know, after that, I was like, you weren't even that funny on stage. Like you had to be really funny for me to be right with you. And I never felt but anybody see, was like, but if he had game, he would be like, I know, I know. That's why I wasn't right with you. You can punch my, punch my shit up. That's why I wasn't funny, because I need you to help me. That's why I wasn't right. So if he had game, they would have said that. And you'd be like, oh, OK, because you would have taken the compliment. And then, and then bam, next thing you know. Yeah. No, because I'd have been like, now you want me to work. I was lazy. I was like, no, you need to write for me. Ain't nobody writing all this down. Forget all that. I'm curious too. Does that mean that it worked? If they tried it on you, does that mean that they caught some woman on a third or fourth time on stage that it did work? Because like, who does that work? Well, it worked on? on a lot of women. It worked. It worked. I remember when Tiffany Haddish uh, first got to LA, or she was in LA when she first came on the scene. Yeah. I know. I won't say their names. Who was like, you know, trying to have writing sessions with her, and they weren't real writing sessions. You know, they was trying to. And she talks about it too. She talks about how. She's like, okay, that's gonna be five hundred dollars. You pay my rent, I'll write with you. You know, it it was, right. it was it was like that because you know she she ran into that. But and I think almost probably ninety nine percent of the female comics who are somewhat attractive. You know, table ran read, into that issue. Uh, there's a table, table read. read. Ain't nobody at the house. Wait, what? Where's everybody? Right. <laughs> Where the rest of the cast? It's like twenty. Matter of fact, in wait, wait, wait. Where's the table? Right. <laughs> yeah, I, just think I, I had way too much testosterone. I was I might have been cute, but I was so ignorant. I really think that I here's, was just... here's, the thing. here's the thing too, was I get, I think guys were afraid of too on that side was uh you talk about them on stage, right? Especially if it was whack. You know what I mean? But I'm telling you. Flame Monroe, who's in my Fat Tuesday doc as well as Kim, Flame talks about how, why uh, she couldn't get stage time because a lot of the comics used to want to just try to get at her. And they were afraid that she was going to out them on stage, out them on stage. So they would, guys who ran rooms or, or you know, was, was scared to get Flame that mic because they gave Flame their mic. <laughs> I got to call Flame. She don't she don't kiss and tell. Damn. She ain't talking. No, she about don't. No, but, but you know what? She does those blind item types. She does those blind item type things. She'll give clues, blues clues, but she won't, she won't, she won't rap. And I was always like, yo, I wasn't scared to put Flame on stage because she ain't got nothing on me. So I, and you're funny, so I ain't worried about it. So speaking of, 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 of kissing and telling and what you think about the Shay Shay 
the Shay Shay room. First of all, I can't stand that name. But the cat interview, <laughs> the Shay Shay. Like you know, I, I heard that's what they call them. You asked what? No, they, they heard, they heard that was his name, that his nickname growing up was Shay Shay. So that's where it became. Oh, the okay. Shay Shay. Yeah, well, it's getting it's getting kind of re. So guy was mentioned in that first one, which that was that was wild. But then it's I guess what was it yesterday? Your friend, both of your friend, probably Lil Rel was on. Yeah, and, I saw that. And, and he ha it's kind of reignited it because now he's saying things about cat or whatever else. But that's just an update. I don't know if you knew that, Kim. Well, oh, I didn't know well, that. The way he had it, the way he had the way Lil Rel handled it, it was a really good interview. The interview was interesting because. It, it, it to me it was a a, a somewhat better interview because it was well rounded in how Little Rel really came into the game, who he looked up to, and how he got to where he is. Shannon was a different interviewer in that particular interview than the one with Cat, you know. Mm -hmm. And and I, I think the Little Rel interview, I texted him after I watched it and was just like, "Yo, this was like a a good cigar." It, it, it started off with flavor and then it built and it, and, it, and it finished pretty strong too. Cause it seemed like at first, um, Shannon was a little bit, I wouldn't say uncomfortable, but he wasn't as loose as he was when he was interviewing Kat. But as the interview went on, they both loosened up, got comfortable and it became an even better interview. So, and he talks about Kat, but the way he handled the Kat situation was, I thought it was admirable. He said, yeah, they had beef, but he, he started off by saying Kat gave him great advice when he first started in this industry. And then um, and then when and he said, I think Kat, in that Wanda interview, uh, Wanda Smith, the uh, DJ in Atlanta that Kat went off on years ago, he called Lil Rel ugly. <laughs> and Lil Rel, you know, you know took, kind of took offense to that. But, but the, way, the way he handled it, I think he handled it in a way to where um, well, hold he on. Let's stop right there. Let's be honest. Let's 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 be honest. Let's do it. You, you and Little <laughs> You're Rail see me run off run off the stay of the screen. Right. You and Little Rail came on this scene. Y'all weren't the swans you are now. Y'all was little ducklings. What do you mean? Y'all weren't. Y'all oh, were not. Oh, y'all didn't know. I know. I know. I know. That's what I'm saying. That, when y'all came on, y'all was just like. Like we see little kids and then they grow up and you're like, damn, right. is that the Marcus? Right. What no, you and Little Rail was not like, ooh, look at that. What nobody checking for y'all? So the truth you know is, y'all grew up and grew into, y'all was kids. Y'all was like, just like me. But I mean, I might've been cute, but I wasn't, y'all was not that when you came on the scene. I, I, I never, I you never claimed to be ugly. Not uh, right, no, but I'm just saying that. that so when Cat might have said that, I don't think that he meant like ugly. I don't think that's the word. Well, he meant, yeah, no, he, meant, he, he no, he meant that. He said it like that. You gotta watch it. You gotta watch it. You gotta, you gotta watch. It. He's I'm trying to soften the shit. Like y'all was you no, know. It, no, no. When you watch it, you'll understand. You'll understand because everybody comes to this game. But y'all are swans now. Both of y'all. You, it's so interesting because y'all have grown into uh, Swan. Our okay. faces. Hey, hey, I got to pick up Joshua. Don't let me forget. Or you. Okay. Y'all grew. <laughs> no, I can't. I can't remind you. I'll be accused of micromanagement. <laughs> remind me to pick up Joshua, y'all. Don't let this podcast go and I forget this. Oh, you gone. Okay. All right. I got to pick up Joshua. Damn it. Are you remember. shitting me? <laughs> Joshua, pick up Joshua. Pick up Joshua. Because Charlene ain't going to remember. We got you. So, okay, so here, so before you have to go pick up your kid. So with all of this happening, Guy, you literally had him on Fat Tuesdays. You all are all clearly friends and respect each other. Did moments like the first time around and then I don't know what else, do those, does that change your relationship? Are you talking about Cat Williams? Yeah, with Cat. No, I don't change my relationship. Cat's I wouldn't think so. I, mean, I understand, of course. I understand why Cat, I understand why he did it. I mean, it's very calculated. I don't take anything personal. My, my, my rebuttal to Cat Williams was the fact that um, he had said some, he misspoke about the documentary. He had said that um, Cedric never performed there and 
Tiffany Haddish never didn't come up through there, and Steve didn't perform there, and Kevin Hart didn't perform there. And I had to show the receipts where Cedric did perform at Fat Tuesdays in the early days before Cat was even coming around at Fat Tuesdays, and Cedric performed in the later days. And I had to show the clip of it. If you watch the documentary, you'll see Cedric doing a set at Fat Tuesdays. So it was there a lot. And then he said Kevin Hart never came through there when I had to show pictures and video of Kevin Hart on stage and him talking about Fat Tuesdays way back then and how it really helped his career. And that's how he learned how to network and move through Hollywood. And we never said that Tiffany Haddish uh, came through Fat Tuesdays. We actually said that she couldn't get in. She had to use a fake ID. And we never said Steve Harvey performed there. We said he attended there. So I posted all those pictures and videos mm -hmm. just to like, you know, to like, you know, because if I'm a guy that's going to live in this documentary space, and, and someone saying that I'm telling lies, who's gonna buy a documentary from Guy Tory if I'm not telling the truth and making up shit? So I had to like come on and just say, hey, no, here are my receipts. Uh, you misspoke, keep it moving. Cass is still still a great, he's a great comedian and he's a good friend. He's here Friday. He's here Friday in St. Louis. I've got more people, Kim, right. Kim and Guy. You can take that down, Deja. Kim and Guy, you'll both appreciate this. One person I don't mind that they hit me up. I've had about ten people hit me with zero connections to to Cat Williams asking me about tickets. So whatever he's done, man, I bet it's like that in every city. Oh, he's done it. Hey, I, I, people think I'm mad at Cat, right? So I'm glad they do, so they won't hit me up. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. I don't want to hit me up, man. Man, can you? I'm a, I'm a lot. Like, man, you heard what Cat said about me? He didn't give me no ticket. <laughs> so. I do love that he, did you, Kim. You may not have seen it. Did you see where he ran at the where he ran at a workout at Florida State? He's fast. He's still fast. That like cat cat ran. I heard with, with, he ran. He ran. He ran forty. I guess he ran a four seven. I think it said whatever it was. What it He's was still that fast. So day. it I was think, impressive. No, I think because Cat and he, and he broke down how he read them 3,000 books. And if you saw him with Joe Rogan, you can see, you know, that. in that, that interview, right? Cat, Cat ain't playing with y'all. <laughs> I've said for years, I've told, you can go back to every interview I've done across the country for the last 10 years and pull up if I reference, when I reference Cat. I've said that he was a genius, his IQ is 160. I've been saying that for at least 10 years, at least 10 years. And when I hit him with it one day, he was, uh, he was actually in St. Louis. There's a New Year's Eve show a few years ago. He and Mike Epps, and uh -huh. he was in the dressing room. He had the flu. He was sick as hell, and and he was like, "Man, I just wrote a whole new hour, man. I'm nervous." I said, "Come on, man, you Mensa." And he looked at me. I said, "Man, your IQ is 160." He said, "How do you know that?" I said, "My study comedians. I was working on the Fat Tuesday doc, of course. So I studied, a, researched a lot of comedians that I wanted to be in a documentary. So when we shot, uh -huh. I'd have their whole bio." ready for you know whatever director was going to do it and end up being the great Reggie Hudson. But Cat always oh. been a genius. Is that it was 160? Yeah. What's mine since you were studying people? 69. Oh, cool. <laughs> I wanted to make sure you did it. I made sure. Yep. Favorite number. That's it. My favorite number. Kim, you were you were in. We keep talking about Fat Tuesdays. If you haven't seen it, I know all of our listeners and viewers uh, supported Kim, and when it, whenever it came out a few years back, Kim and opens everything. it. She does. She looks great. You all filmed that during COVID. You work with that Kim. Mm -hmm. Kel Kelsey Grammer was a, a producer on that with Guy. I'm curious why you never shot your shot with Kelsey. That don't sound right. Oh. You shot your shot. Wait, what? Why didn't my you ever? Do my Kim? Kim. Why didn't you ever go Kim, after Kelsey oh, oh, Grammer? Hey, 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 Kelsey don't come on the set. Only black well, people were alive. Right, because we shot during COVID. And Polly Shore. Before we shot, right. Before we, before, because we shot during COVID, we had a limited amount of people we could have on set. So with the crew and everybody with talent, we would have been over our limit. So there's a lot of producers from Amazon and Gramnet and also um, original productions who couldn't come on the set. So... What they did was they had a live feed watching the whole, all the interviews and everything because because of LA County rules, COVID rules, Fremantle COVID rules, um, and also uh, Amazon COVID rules. We only allow a certain amount of people. So that was absolutely 
And A, are you going on the Tom Joyner cruise this year? I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not. It's, it's always a great time. Those of you who have never been, I recommend you go. It's the most fun you ever have all year on, on, on the cruise. But I'm telling you, it's, Tell it's people, incredible. Tom Joyner, April 27th, Tom Joyner. April 27th, May 4th. Yeah, it's on the screen. Yeah, it's, it's here. I, Deja, if, yeah, here we got we got all kinds of fun. April twenty seventh through May fourth. The link is in the description again, or you can call two one four four nine five one nine six three. You can book that now. Labadee, Haiti, Porto Plata, Dominican Republic, San Juan, Puerto Rico, Independence of the Seas. You can go hang out with all your friends. Check out these pictures. We've got some pictures, and also I'll tell you who's uh, who's some of the folks that are performing. Wait, Check. put that back up. I want to see that one more time. And they're back on Royal Caribbean too. They're back oh, on okay. Royal Caribbean. Oh, beautiful. Yes, yeah. yes. Independence of the sea. It's a bomb boat. So we're going to right. Go ahead. Go ahead, um, Chris. Sorry. Oh, for sure. Performances by Shaka Khan, Earth, Wind and Fire, Bobby Brown, Tank, Ralph Tresvant, Ja Rule, Kirk Franklin, Method Man, Red Man, Ashanti. Uh look Man. I kinda wanna go to FAMU now. <laughs> <laughs> Man, Roy Wood Jr. Roy Wood Jr. went there, and I I think it looks all right. Okay, I didn't. That caught me off my read. This is how the cruise is every night off the chain. It's, it's one of the best parts. Does he of wear this? Huh? Does he wear like robes like this? He is styling. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Tom. 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 Tom got a closet that's out of this. That looks like you know uh, any celebrity, any major. He's a major celebrity. He actually made a lot of his celebrities, to be honest. Tom Jordan, I I think should have a star in the walk, walk, uh, Hollywood Walk of Fame because, you know, the the the, the artists that that have stars on the Walk of Fame, Tom made them become those stars by having them come on a radio show. He's friendly to comedians, friendly to singers, friendly yeah. to actors, and he 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 helped put them where they are. And what people don't know about Tom Jordan is that. He was one of the original Commodores, basically. Uh, he was a drummer uh, when they were in college. Um, with the Commodores, him and Lionel Richie hey, were very good. Hey, that's me. That's me on the cruise. Yeah, Check that's it out. Y'all got to go. Yeah. Come, Tom yeah. Jordan cruise. It is, I'm telling you, on your bucket list. I don't know if there's any cabins gotta left. Be, my gotta be. You left yeah. the it's a couple cabins left because that's a big boat. If Check you want to experience a lifetime, go ahead. Chris. Oh, yeah. Allison Hines. I'm telling you, you won't go to sleep. George Wallace, Myra J, J. Anthony Brown, Chris Paul, Huggy Lowdown, EU featuring Sugar Bear. I, that's absurd. Like the amount of talent and you like fun. Go-Go. You got Go-Go. They got everything yeah. on there from gospel to Go-Go. From gospel to Go-Go. Yeah. It is a, a, an experience of a lifetime. For real. As they so call it, party uh, with a purpose. And all the money goes to HBCU, um, you know, HBCU, colleges that, that for black people. Uh, for everybody, but you know, focus on for us. So yeah, uh, it's a great time. I ain't gonna lie. One go more time. Let's go ahead. Oh, sorry, Deja. If we could just celebrate Florida A and M University one more time, I think it's really no, important. No, it's, really important. it's really important. It's really important. Go Rattlers! Go Rattlers! <laughs> All right. One of mamas looks like they got a snake in their pants. <laughs> Take it easy. <laughs> Guy Tory, everybody. Uh, let's go to the live chat. You want to say hi to some people? We've got a, a special yeah, treat yeah, let's first. Yeah. Let's say hi to some people. I forgot I... To say, you know, we should. We forgot to say happy birthday to Lunell. Happy Lunel birthday. Happy birthday, Lunell. Also in the Fat Tuesday documentary, Lunell, happy birthday. I love you, baby. She used to have the great the parties at the Mavis. Remember, you ever go to a party at Mavis Flat on Crenshaw? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Bishop Don Juan, Lunell, always she still gives Ludell still gives Lunell still gives the best parties. Have you ever been to yes. her, since Maverick's flat is closed? Have you ever been to Lunell's parties? You know, she doesn't got such a big star me. now. Yeah, I don't think she gives big oh. parties anymore. She didn't blew up too much. I don't think so. She is. no, no, I don't right. think so. But once again, happy birthday, that, Lunell. We that. need you to give another party. Happy birthday. We Dude. love you, yes. Do her a favor for her birthday. Go to Netflix and give her special a thumbs up. It's very funny. If you like Lunel, I was there. I did. It, yeah, authentically, Lunel. Oh, that's great. Yeah, that's right. I, yeah. I flew that's in. Good, I happy birthday, you know, I, yeah. Happy birthday, Lunel. 
MM yeah, subs- yeah. MM works with Lunell, and we have one of Lunell's people in the chat. Uh, Tom Joyner introduced me to Usher. He's the absolute best. Uh, Pac 93 is having a good time. Brandon Rouse, Rouse says, Happy birthday, Lunell. Makila John, everybody. Pac 93, Darlie says, Loving it. Uh, Shanna N says, They never introduced Guy. They just started talking <laughs> today. <laughs> guy Tori. Here, Kim, we, what, you want to do a redo? You want to do a redo and introduce yeah, I'm Guy? I'm a family. You know, they, they did it. That's true. Yeah. You know him from American History X. You know him from Fat Tuesdays, the movie Life with Eddie Murphy, Martin Lawrence, Guy Tory from St. Louis, everybody, in the Emo's Pizza sweater. There it is. Uh, <laughs> some other folks in the chat. Cheryl's uh, wishing happy birthday. Uh, Irina, Lolo12, CT, uh, all kind. GMAC says, Why does Guy look like Ja Rule? Ja Rule is on that. <laughs> On that thing, I that murder. <laughs> I look like a little turtle. Says so I look like a little turtle. Who said that? I didn't. You, I you, like you, you look like a turtle. I think Jaru look like a little turtle. Oh, I thought it was you. Like you look I, like Jaru. I, like I, I, I like Hell of an MC. Shanna says. Uh, Shanna appreciates that earlier that Kim said you all grew into handsome men. <laughs> <laughs> I'm still working on it. I got a, I got a couple of chromosomes left to go. Okay. Tracy Curtis is going to go on the cruise. That's great. You got to check out again. The link is in the description too. If you all want to check out the full details, yeah, you can go check that out. Uh, let me know when our uh, our guest is jumping on. Deja, she should be. Oh, she on? Guy, I we've got a special treat for you, Kim. We do this every week um, when we can. Support a black business is something that Kim and Sherry started at the very beginning. They make it happen. <laughs> she tell me, go, run, run it, run it. Uh, I, was, I, was, I was doing like, guy, like, whoop, whoop, I don't know what I was doing. Oh, okay. Be honest. Arsenio, Arsenio, Arsenio Hall. Oh, you know, punk, no, it was bad. Punk. It was all bad. It was like your auntie trying to do some stuff that she didn't know what she was doing. Continue. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm doing the yeah. stinky leg. Uh <laughs> Perfect. Uh, but she hey, had gout. Right. Uh, our friend Cita Lewis from Miracle Buttercream. I had her come on today. Guy is with us. Guy Tori. Cita's father was Butch Lewis, fam- famous boxing promoter. Oh, wow. Yeah, worked with St. Louis Legends, obviously the Spinks Brothers as well. We'll bring her on. She has her own she business. Wear, Oh, did she go take ahead. her shirt off like her dad did? did she, I you'll have to ask her. He did. He was famous for the suit for the tuxedo with no shirt underneath. Like that was a big thing. Uh so yes, so Cedar Lewis, Miracle Buttercream. She is the sponsor each and every week where we bring on different black businesses. We'll have a new we have a t shirt business next week. We'll have more to tell you about. But Cedar is coming on today and uh, give some updates on Miracle Buttercream. We need to get guy some Miracle Buttercream as well. But yeah, I was just saying I do. Yeah, yeah, we do, because he is as she. I didn't mean it like that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, look. Look at that. Look at that ash. Cedar. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Look at that ash. Look at that ash. Yeah. <laughs> She's got you covered, guy. <laughs> at Miracle Animal. Buttercream on Instagram. Yeah, I bet you could eat it. I Don't tell too many people, because... Uh, Something weird might happen. How are you, Sita? Hey, Sita. That's why it's edible. Thank you for having me again. I, I'm glad to yeah. join this party. <laughs> Y'all are having too much fun. We are I in think trip. I'll ask for guy. Can people take the Miracle Buttercream onto the Tom Joyner cruise and use it on their significant others? Nice. Absolutely. Absolutely. I mean, I tell people that this cream is is can be used for every part of the body. For any, okay. for, for all different kinds of uses. You can keep it on the nightstand. You can keep it in the bathroom. Uh, it's good from, he- we say from head to toe. It'll keep you moisturized. But we have, I mean, we have Miracle Buttercream. We've got deodorant, all natural now. Oh, wow. All of our products. Yeah, I, ran, I ran out my deodorant. I think my son took it. I, I, I got you. <laughs> we, got, we got lip balm. You wear secret too. Her, her household baby, is begging you to send her some more. I get out there. Go ahead, Cedar. Do you have oil? Do you what have hair you oil yet? Yes. You've been doing a and, lot. Do you have hair oil yet? Do I have what? Do you have hair oil hair yet? 
oh, 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 do I have hair oil? Do I? I'm a- so not only I have hair oil, but what distinguishes ours from so many? We steep pure rosemary into our hair oil <laughs> because everybody yeah, knows yeah, that yeah. rosemary is so healthy for the hair. Um, so not only do we have peppermint oil in this, but we also have pure rosemary oil and we steep it in rosemary so that all the benefits of the rosemary can really penetrate the hair follicles. And I mean, like it, this stuff will have your hair grow. What, 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 what's what about for the, what about right, for the what's big like, bottles, Look how excited that's, both that's, of them are. The big, the big, <laughs> The big bottle is body oil. This is our jumbo okay. bottle of body oil. I, I I mean, like when I tell you we have the best body oil in the world. So if, if you're not into butters, because there are actually people who are allergic to shea butter or cocoa butter or mango butter. So we have we, we always have a backup. You know, we always have a backup. Like my dad used to say, uh, prepare for war in times of peace. <laughs> OK, so we have another product that has, you know, um, jojoba oil, argan oil, marula oil, Abyssinian oil from Ethiopia. I mean, like there's nine oils in this product. Um, And I'm telling you like, this is the truth. I keep two of these in my bathroom in two different scents and my husband uses them, I use them, but you know, it's, it's a personal choice. What about for the scalp? Like if I shave out my hair off, is there any oils that's good for my scalp? So the one beautiful thing about Miracle Buttercream is that you can use it on your scalp um, and you can use it on your hair and you can use it as a, as a beard balm. You can use it from head to toe. But we do have a product called Miracle Buttercream Hair Growth Formula. It comes in a clear jar like this um, and it's strictly for the hair. And that one has peppermint and rosemary oil in it too. And that's for stimulating the follicles in your hair, but also for people who have locks. And the, you know how when people have locks, they'll put hair grease on their hair and then you squeeze the lock and you got uh, like grease in your fingers. Yeah. The mir- All of the Miracle Buttercream products absorb into your skin and your hair and your scalp. Mm-hmm. So when you put it into your hair, skin and scalp, you don't feel that grease it just literally like this is a face butter that we just came out with um and it's a little thicker than our regular butter but as you can see like how thick it looks right there um and as thick as it is it will still melt to the point where you cannot it it's not going to leave any white streaks like lotion does and as thick as that is and we like put ooh goo goo gobs of jojoba oil in this and cocoa butter, and it's not greasy. It, it doesn't leave you feeling greasy, it leaves you feeling moisturized. So that's literally like how all of our products work, head I, to toe. Okay. Um, I, I wanted to let any any Florida AM and uh, m gals tuned in know oh that uh, this was, uh, <laughs> this was, this could have started a, a fire. This was, this was uh, dry straw this morning before I came in and I put the, her, her beard stuff in it and I'm shiny and, and soft and lovable. Yeah, I use yeah. the Miracle Buttercream on my beard every day. Um, <laughs> you know what's crazy? So for us women who are in our 50s, okay, because I'm, I, I'm knocking on uh, 60s door real quick. Um, but, oh, wow. You know, the Miracle Buttercream, number one, keeps you looking super young. Um, it, it, you know, it keeps the, the, the wrinkles away it keeps the dry skin away but i'm telling you like like for me um i use it every day people say you know like what do you do for your skin i don't use those expensive like 200 dollar creams and eye cream and all this i use the same thing i use on my hair and the edges i use around my eyes you know can't forget the neck the whole head to toe you know we got the whole we we have the whole body covered so uh you use the one that's in the blue thing on everything but you do have other products that are specific for parts of the body yeah because we have so many customers who have extreme eczema or extreme dermatitis and psoriasis and different like real 
serious sensitive skin and skin issues. So, you know, I didn't start the business because um, because I had eczema or I had sensitive skin, but I was actually teaching culinary in Harlem. Um, and I had students that were plagued with eczema. And I came up with this recipe to help rescue their skin. And when they went home for Christmas break and came back, their skin was like completely cleared. And that was just off of this, my first recipe, which is my signature product, the Miracle Buttercream. And guy, you're going to love it. I'm going to send you a package. And and Kim, I'll, I'll send everybody like an updated package because we got oh, new I, 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 oh, I didn't know the sense. And I'm looking for that because I keep thinking somebody keeps taking my meal, your buttercream. I'm telling you, people come in there and I'm like, <laughs> I can't find. This is so I true. One jar. I, I don't know if it's Sherry doing it. I'm so serious because <laughs> Joshua had the worst skin. And then, you know, I'm about to text Dare Joy right now. I, 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 don't, don't send me don't send me the pink petals. Be, uh, so so a lot of the yeah the pink petal is a new scent specifically um, for women, but the rest of our scents are all unisex. And like the purple crush, this is another new one. I mean, guys and women alike love it. My husband uses this one every day, and I, and when he gives me a kiss to say good you know, that he's leaving for work, I'm like, ooh, I smell my products on him. You know, it's like. <laughs> <laughs> purple crush. I want purple crush in. I'm going to put that on I my boy. Yeah. It's, it's, you, uh, never, you, never, you, never, you never, you never, put, you never pulled him back in and say, hey, you're going to be late today. <laughs> <laughs> Some of those scents do They'll that. Wait back so. upstairs. <laughs> Come back to bed, honey. Sita, exactly. I, had a, I had a question for you. I, I'm curious, and this is bad because I didn't do the research ahead of time, Kim, so you can make fun of me. Feel free to roast me if this is a bad question. Sita worked in TV, and she has all these crazy connections to St. Louis, to like any time. Sita and I talk quite a bit, and we end up like, oh my gosh, Sita was this. She managed this girl group for me, St. Louis. She did this. She did that. What weird connections do you have to Mr. Guy Tory? Any? Did you all work on a TV show at some point together? Like, there's always something with you. I probably think as soon as this podcast ends, I'm going to call you and say, oh, yeah, me, we used to go out. No, but um, besides, I wouldn't the do that. Louis, besides the St. Louis thing, like, you know, the Spinks brothers um, are from St. Louis. Leon Spinks, literally, um, back in the 80s, he moved into our house. Actually, it was in the 70s because... He fought Muhammad Ali in 1978 and he beat yep. him. I remember my dad, you know, the Sphinxes were a little wild. Um, and so he didn't yeah. want him to stray off. So he literally moved Leon into our house. And I remember having my first canopy bed and I was all excited. Remember the girls had the big canopy and, and I was, yep. and my dad was like, you're going to have to give up your room uh, for Le for uncle Leon. And I was like, what? <laughs> and and, and his, my friend, his, his teeth, his, 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 yeah, that was a thing. That, that, <laughs> I thought everybody from St. Louis had missing teeth because all of his family members, as I was meeting them one by one, like down to his mom, I, was, I said, what? So I, I realized it, it had to be a genetic thing. I'm sorry. <laughs> I was, have a right. Family thing. It was a family thing. It was thing. a family thing. It was they, a family thing. Hey, that was good. It was a good family though. And, and Butch and Butch Lewis, their promoter. Yeah, yeah. Look, when you he, said that he, about he, the new shirt, he, he, he needed that. But he needed that buttercream. Oh, let me see that. He need need to put it close to the camera. Can you go to a one shot, Deja? Oh, that's good. Oh. Yeah. And, and check this yeah. out. Okay, you see those words that say "keep the faith" on the picture. So when my dad passed away, you know, I found all these promo pictures in a big box in storage. And, wow. you know, the promo pictures, they weren't signed. None of them were signed. And I started thumbing through the pictures, literally like, 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 like doing one of these numbers. And one deep in the middle of the box was signed and said, wow. keep the and what's so crazy is that after he passed away, we our family went through so many tumultuous, crazy things. You know how what happens when people pass away. Right, right. Um, and all my dad's affairs were in order, but there was still 
people who came out of the woodwork with all kinds of stuff. And Fox really, and it was, yeah, it was those words that were like, keep the faith. And it leveled my faith up to the point wow. where wow. It, 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 pre it prepared me for the craziest things that I never thought I would face. And, um, and my dad wasn't one, and Kim knows, he wasn't one that walked around talking about God or faith. But he always had faith, you know? Yeah. And so for me to have found that picture and I keep it in the back of my office here. And now, you know, I'm I have this, you know, amazing, successful skincare business. We ship all over the world. We had a customer in Germany last week. Shout out to Germany. We have customers in Turkey. So um I'm really excited. He would be proud of me. He would say, you know, he had all these sayings, you know. Um he showed one of his me. One of his sayings was, don't do no nigga business, okay? And we know that. Oh, yeah. Don't come oh, half-stepping ever, ever, right? you know? And so, he, he came up when boxing was boxing. And you got to stay in the trenches. The trenches. You got to stay in the trenches, Kim. I was like, the Surf trenches. The <laughs> the wagon, you know? And, and matter of fact, um, his best friend was Denzel Washington. I was going to say, that's the reason I know Denzel is because of your daddy. I, Denzel wow. called me literally uh, on Sunday, and, and it was at 7 o'clock in the morning, so I didn't pick up, and he left the message. But if I could play the message, and, and he said to keep, keep what he said uh, between he and I, but he's doing a movie with Spike right now, right? Right. And so um, he said, just, he said, that's all I'm going to say is I'm playing uh, a character of a, um, a guy who runs a record label. And my dad ran a record label at some point in his career too. Uh, we had a deal oh. with Def Jam. So he said, just observe the character. And he spoke the character using my dad's voice in on the voicemail. Oh. So, so, so weird. I was like, whoa, I can't wait to see this movie. Now you because, know that he, he because they, like, were, they, were I'm, 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 they were best friends. They were best friends. I'm watching anything Denzel's in. I'm watching anything Denzel's in. I mean, it's just, it's just I don't have to see a trailer or nothing. Is that Denzel in it? I'm watching it. And I was so happy to hear that he was getting back with Spike because some of his some of my favorite movies that he's done, like Malcolm X, and and uh, you know the ones where he just really like went into character right. to the point where you thought that's who he was. You know, um, and now he's doing a, another movie with Spike. So I, I can't wait to see that. Yeah. I got a fun fact about Spike Lee. Two, mm -hmm. really. One, um, he was he wanted to direct the Fat Tuesday documentary, my documentary. But we would have to wait two years. And Amazon didn't want to wait. You know, so that oh, would have wow. been, that would have been, you know. I mean, we got, we got Reggie Hudson, which was, you know, the perfect guy for it. But the other thing was, while we were shooting the Fat Tuesday documentary, Reggie was Reggie Hudson was telling me that he Spike Lee had already shot uh, "Do the Right Thing," right? And he was telling him about Robin Harris, and he said, "Man, oh. this is funny comedian named Robin Harris in my movie. You got to put him in. You got to put him in a house party. You got to put him in a house party." And he gave mm -hmm. an advanced copy to Reggie Hudson so he could see Robin Harris, and 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 that's what filmmakers did back then. Black filmmakers stuck together. And it wasn't and do the right thing wasn't even out yet. And he and, and Reggie Hudson saw Robin Harris and do the right thing and put him in house party. But and that's what we should be doing as as black people, as, yeah, as helping each other out. Not competing, but helping each other out and rooting for each other. And and that's yeah. what we really need to get back to. You know, uh Reginald Hudlin, so we do have something in common. So Reginald Hudlin used to be the president of BET. And I yeah. used to be a producer at BET for 15 years. So, yeah. I, and I was there, I produced Teen Summit for seven years. Uh, wow. A show called Heart and Soul, uh, which was a health and fitness show. And then yeah. I produced um, BET News. I did the entertainment segments. Uh, so I, I had a nice little stint at, um, at BET. And I remember going to the party in New York, welcoming Reginald Hudlin um as the new president of bt yeah because i was there yes, during yeah. the time directed, was and that's when your daddy produced my show on bt oh, drama. Oh, yeah. Drama. Yep. Oh, drama. i did that show too yeah her, her daddy was my boss
We argued a lot, yeah. but it was fine. <laughs> okay. did a drama. Wait, Kim, you argued drama. with somebody? Oh, her daddy. I, was, he, I he just don't. Playing. I couldn't. I can't believe it. He wasn't I can't playing. Can't I can't argue with anybody, Kim. But I was. Butch taught me a lot. But I was like, "Hey, Butch." He was like, "You know, I'm in the trenches." But then when I come in <laughs> town, he picked me up. And what, what was it, the Bentley or the Rolls Royce? And he had these carpet. I don't know what kind of carpet on the feet. And it was red, I think red lambs. It was crazy. It was, a berry, there, yeah. it was a berry and, color. And yeah, um, he had the interior nice. was a cream burl wood. <laughs> and the thing is, my dad wasn't flashy. Like he, he, there was six kids, you know, so he waited before he, before he really started spending like real bread on stuff. He, he had all of us graduated from college, you know, cause wow. we were all back, back in college. I went to Georgetown. My brother went to Howard Morehouse, you know, all these different schools. And he was like, Hey, I got to get all y'all Negroes through college. So yep. y'all can help me pull this wagon. <laughs> that, that was another thing he said, you know, yeah. Steve Harvey about him. Um, Steve Harvey wrote about him in his book, um, uh, Act Like a Success. He talked about how my father talks about how we got to pull the wagon and how yeah. you got to have people in your life. Only people you should have in your life are people that can help you push or pull or something, but don't have nobody on your wagon with their feet up. Just ride. Oh, <laughs> I need to get them. off the wagon. That's I Kim. need everybody to get off the wagon. That's Kim's attire. Hey, you your kids got to do something. Somebody got, they got to move rocks. They got to do something. But it, it's, uh, and, and, and Steve Hart. I need you to text me that. Nice that. Yeah. Uh, you so, know what? I got to, I got, you got to promote uh, Miracle Buttercream one more time. I am going to, I'm going to let you and Guy close out because y'all know I got to pick up Joshua. And I almost yes. forgot. Someone just texted me and said Joshua because I don't pick him <laughs> up every day so I forget. So, uh, I, Cedar, I'll be waiting on my package. Guy, it's yes, been I great. Yeah, thank you, sweetie. Chris? No, I, was, I was there for you, I'll sis. Nothing. All right, thank you. Oh, thank she's, you for, she's walking uh, out right now. I got to I got to go pick up my kid man. But you know what? Let's we got to thank Cedar for sponsoring our Black Business Corner even though Chris does not put somebody on every week. He's trying. Um I don't know cuz he doesn't know black people. I don't know what's happening. But no. I, I have, have I have four candidates that are that are hitting me up. So you'll, you'll Cita, have a couple. Cedar and, and I are are pulling the wagon. We're just begging week. Kim. We're I'm just like, begging Kim. I got we got a sweatshirt company. I got a little book company. We got some honey that came in. Did, but did you know Nick, what? It's did Nikki text me? Did uh, Nikki? Do you gonna have Nikki text me? No, I'm gonna. I got the information right now. I'm gonna send it to you right oh, now. Oh, now. Okay, gotcha, gotcha. gotcha. <laughs> All right. Kim Whitley, everybody. Oh my gosh. <laughs> We won't. We won't have to keep the everybody on too much longer. But uh, since Kim does have to run off, so if you're just tuning in, this is two funny mamas, and not not one funny mama is on here. Sherry busy with her show this week. <laughs> I'm a this here. Got an entrepreneur mama. Right. We got, got entrepreneur mama on here. We got Mama Zita. We got Guy Tory repping the emos. He's a St. Louis guy, and uh, and I'm here in St. Louis at Midcoast Media. Uh, guy, I'm curious. Oh, go ahead, Guy. I just had a question for is 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 was she and are you and and or are you still a boxing fan? You've seen the business change. Well, Do you get yeah, into it or you don't get into it? I, my husband really gets into all sports. So so he's more up on boxing. Like I'll see him staying up late waiting for the main attraction for all these fights, and I'll be like, who is that? Like, I don't even know these boxers anymore. <laughs> you know, he, he told me that a couple of days ago, he said, I heard Mike Tyson is coming back to fight somebody. But I yeah. think it's like mm. one of those, you know, um, Exhibition you know just emotional type of things. Right. I said, hey, but it's going to put a few million dollars in his pocket. So why not? I don't, I don't blame him. I would get in there I, and fall out. I'd get, I'd get in the ring with, with Mike Tyson for a few million dollars in my pocket. 
I don't. I'm. I and to to your point, to back up your point, to even yes and the living hell out of that. We're probably talking more like twenty, thirty million. Like that'll be. That's it. It's at, it's at yeah. Dallas's stadium. Like it, it's it's yeah. it's, it's, it's in, and it's Jake I mean, Paul. I mean, Real? You'll go? You're gonna go? Yeah, man. I just found this really cool cigar lounge in Fort Worth called Underground. So any chance to go back to this cigar lounge and. And, and, and Dallas, Texas, Fort Worth area. I'll go, but I'll go for that fight. Hell yeah. Legitimately nervous. I, I, I my, no, Mike he, is, he he is of, pushing 60, and this kid's training and probably allegedly taking taking, spe, taking special supplements. <laughs> yeah, they got a weird contract. The contract is really weird, uh, to be honest. So I just hope Mike knocks him the hell out. But I, I yeah. admire I Paul's. I met Mike. Yeah. Oh, is that the cigar bar um, you have on your Instagram page, where you're you were in? Yeah, I put one of them on there. I put a few of them on there. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I I I have one. um, mm Mhm. No, go ahead. I think we have a delay. We have a little delay. I was going to say, I met Mike Tyson um, when he was like 15 years old. And what? When, yeah, because when my, my mother passed away when I was 12. And so my dad used to have to take us to the training camps because, you know, my mom was not around anymore. So we were getting toted to all every, everything boxing. So we used to go to Catskills. And that's where... Um, some of my father's fighters used to train and, and, and wow. Mike Tyson was there as a teenager and we just didn't like, you know, we didn't, we didn't know that that's the Mike Tyson that he would become. Right. Yeah. Wow. He was, he was a, a hunk of a kid too, wasn't he? He was over 200 pounds at that age. Well, he was, he was like, he, he was yeah, like a, kid. A, a truck even back then. Man, yeah. absolutely wild. I'll tell you what, people, if you're tuned in, want to thank everybody. You've been a great live chat audience. We got uh, some people saying hello. Uh, earlier, somebody, I, let me find it, I apologize, was saying how excited they were. Their son has eczema and ordered the Miracle Buttercream unscented. Um, oh. And then Rochelle Perkins wants to know, I'm looking at the sampler pack. Can it be used everywhere from head to toe? Yep, yep, sampler pack. The sampler pack is just mini versions of this product right here so that you can test out a bunch of different scents at one time and then decide which one you want to buy in the big jar. That's that's good. That's good to have. Well, we're going to hook up. good for travel, too. Yeah. Yeah, if we got a little delay. Oh, so I'm, I'm, I'm calling you Joe. Guy, I am going to right. send you. <laughs> A, a collection uh, that probably happens all the time, right? I'm gonna send you a collection of our top selling scents, so you could try them okay. all out. I appreciate that. Thank you. Now and I'll and I'll, I'll give a I'll give a post review. I'll post my reviews. Yes. I know it's gonna be great. I can't wait. <laughs> That's what. Whenever guy rolls out a big tour, it'll be the official butter buttercream of the tour. We'll make butter it happen. Cream. We got to make it happen. Right. Uh, yeah. And, Sita, I know you got a little bit of delay, but I do. I want to thank everybody for tuning in. Kim and Sherry, thank everybody. I want to say this. Sherry said this a couple of weeks ago, and she was giving me trouble last week that it wasn't locked up. We're looking at 200th episode live in St. Louis at a big venue this summer. Get ready. More announcements on that soon. I had a very positive conversation. Let me know about that. You in my city. You in my right? city. Yeah. You're in maybe, my city. Maybe we'll have to have a... <laughs> have to have a buttercream convention on the side of it too and guy yeah. uh let's remind everybody you're in philadelphia this saturday you're in detroit on tuesday saturday. yes tuesday i'm at uh saturday i'm in philly at small's restaurant and uh, event center uh two shows seven and ten o'clock and on tuesday i'm popping into detroit detroit and i'm going to mike epps comedy club one mike so make sure you tune in. There's going to be a bunch of us there, on, both in Philly and in, in in Detroit on Tuesday night. So come check it out. Go to my, my my Instagram and check it out. Follow me and come to the show. We'd love to 
you know, entertain for you. I love it. Sita, I know uh, Mother's Day, Easter, all that is huge for you. So I'm sure we'll get some more information before Mother's Day. Any codes or anything that Two Funny Mamas folks need to know right now? Deja here in the studio was saying, uh, she's like, what, where's the code? What's the newest code? We got to do that. So Two Funny Mamas, TFM15 is still active. Okay. TFM15 gives you 15% off. And yes, we will have bundle deals. Um, we're partnering with um, Matambo Coffee for Mother's Day as well. So oh, we're yeah. going to have a bundle of uh, Dikembe Matambo's Coffee. And then I'm going to have another bundle for people who don't drink coffee. So we're going to have every all our bases covered for Mother's Day coming up. So stay tuned. That's good coffee, too. I've had I'm a coffee drink. That's good coffee. We had Veronica, who was at your show here in St. Louis, guy. We had her on for the Black Business segment a couple weeks back. And people, I do want to announce this as well for Coca Brown's Fund through um, through Matumbo Coffee and through Two Funny Mamas fans purchasing Matumbo Coffee. Matumbo is is uh, what was it for over four hundred dollars. She gave a percentage of sales from a time, and it's down, donated to Coca Brown's uh, GoFundMe. So thank you to Matumbo Coffee, and thank you to all our great listeners. And maybe you can do a Absolutely. coffee scented uh, um, buttercream. Coffee, or yeah, chocolate? you know, <laughs> and that could be, that could be easy with the cocoa butter, with the cocoa butter that we use, because some of our cocoa butter has that chocolate, that chocolatey scent. Do you need? Yeah. Do you need a spokes butterman? I I just might, yeah. Guy Tory. Oh. <laughs> Guy Tory. You're on. 55. 55 <laughs> and getting younger. 55 uh -huh. and getting younger. I'm moonwalking around. I'm moonwalking around the sun. I'm I'm Asian backwards. <laughs> you you really are. That's how you do it. That's... I'll be fifty seven in August. Okay. What? And I've been using yes. Been using my products. Like literally way before they came out, because I've been um, creating um, all Do natural product, products for like 15 years. Yeah, so I finally said, you know what? Let's do. It's the best thing that I could have ever done. I mean, I worked in TV, I worked in music. I love being my own boss, and I love having a staff that's like a family. And I mean, I just love coming in and creating new things that we all love and there's no stress. One of my staff members just last week said, Sita, you are literally the best boss I have ever had. And I was like, oh, am I being too easy? No, but that made me feel good because I want my staff to come in and, and feel the love um, that we put into our products too, to be part of the just the whole vibe of where we make the products, you know? So that, that's just part of my mission. Well, I can turn my studio lights off because your ring is giving enough light. Uh, well, I don't need these studio lights. <laughs> that ring is, that uh -uh. ring is giving enough light. Right. I was like, it'd be awkward if I wear the sunglasses I need. So, guys, follow follow Two Funny Mamas on Instagram. Follow Guy on Instagram. Follow Miracle Buttercream and Cedar Lewis on Instagram. Shout out to Deja here in the studio tonight here in St. Louis. Guys, thank you so much for jumping on. Fans, I know it wasn't Sherry and Kim, but you know what? We still bring the heat. Great job. Thank you so much, Guy. Thank you, Cedar. We're going to keep everybody in the loop. These two are family, so you know they'll be back. So thanks, everybody, and uh, we'll see you next week. Appreciate it. Yep. Philly, Jeez, Detroit, nice. I'll see you. Woohoo! Bye-bye.